We start this week with another upset as the Dukes bowed before the Cajuns 86-71, allowing the Frenchmen to avenge their loss in Week 1. Dukes running backs Westbrook and Graham posted 35 points less in their projections, while the 4-5 and five Cajuns pulled another rabbit out of their hat. Mylan, you'll get that fruitcake after all. The Kangaroos welcomed another woman into the house as Susie came calling with her special brand of football. With Peyton Manning scoring 24 points, Don hit it hard, posting a 106-44 victory. Once again, Susie left her best wide receiver and punter on the bench, depriving her team of 48 points. I guess when you're playing in Don's backyard, you're better off playing with your eyes shut. You never know what you might see. The Roos improved to 3-6, and six, still the worst record in the Selfish Division. Fur was flying and jaws were flapping down in Alabama as the Rednecks took the pasty chicks for a backseat romp. Dan's been down this road before, putting five engine players on the field, and the Southern boys didn't waste any time driving the girls home as they scored an easy 87-69 victory. Jeff was excited to finally get some head uh, coach points from the Eagles. While you're waiting up to see if Jeff calls tomorrow, Dan, you might want to check out ESPN's new fantasy cooking league. I'm unemployed, guys. This is all I do. As we go to broadcast, Syrup beaked out a narrow 108-107 victory over the bellies. It's not often you can credit managing skill with a victory, but Jim left 44 points on his bench while Johnny D squeezed every available point above the line, leaving a mere three points off the field. Susie, meet Johnny. Johnny, Susie. Coming off two straight losses, the Lions were in no mood for games as they devoured the Javelinas 122-116. The Pigs seem to have fixed their quarterback problem for now with 19 points from Jeff Garcia and had six other players post double-digit performances. The Lions catch their second win next week as Phillip Rivers and LT come off a bye week and face the Kangaroos at home. Did I mention the Kangaroos have the worst record in the Selfish Division? The Dogs quietly nipped the Wives 104-65. Adrian Peterson led the Canines with 19 points as the Dogs post their third win in a row. The Wives were hampered with five bye week players, but at 2-6-1, it's clear they'd be better off playing Are You Smarter Than Sarah Palin every weekend. There's three golden rules of football. A receiver's only as good as the guy chucking the ball at him. Punter loyalty never survives a bye week. And football and politics don't mix. But once every four years, that last rule can be broken with impunity. As the teams crossed the halfway mark last week, the presidential candidates visited their respective league leaders. The Rednecks farm team Birmingham Frogs presented John McCain with a good luck jersey at a hastily arranged ceremony. The Southern boys had their original event canceled by the Secret Service when an assistant coach drove up from practice after his skeet round. The Rednecks now extend their lead to two games. Four teams remain locked at four and five with the Kangaroos still in last place at three and six. There's your graphic, Randy. Meanwhile, over in the altruistic division, the Lions presented Barack Obama with a practice jersey at their headquarters. By league rule, Democrats are not permitted to wear full team colors until one of them actually proves he can catch a football. The Lions cemented their lead atop the division, maintaining a one-game lead over the Dogs. The Wives are still floundering at the bottom. Hang in there, Catherine. It's only fitting during this election week that one of our teams ran an internal exit poll to select our new national leader. Maple Syrup's analysis projects the tall guy with the big ears to beat Teen Prez as the leader of the free world. Can we get a closer look at that? Well, now I'm not sure if Syrup Headquarters is infested with gnomes or if Johnny D is really a sock puppet. Thanks for the poll, guys. Good luck to all your favorite candidates. We'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>